What's up you guys, I'm Dan, this is Frugal Not Cheap, and today we'll look at Fancy Pants Premium Banking Tiers. So a while back I got this um, notification in my Schwab account. Turns out it was an erroneous one that went out to a bunch of people, uh, but it said that I now had access to a financial consultant. Anyway, I didn't really think too much about it. Recently, however, I was watching a video by Ask Sebi about some Chase banking products. The video is linked in the description below. In it, he talks about how Chase acquired First Republic Bank uh, when we had that, you know, kind of a panic or a little bit of a crisis with Silicon Valley Bank. Um, I think Silvergate got into trouble too, didn't they? Uh, First Republic. And then there was one more in New York that um, has been in stress. Anyway, Chase ended up acquiring uh, First Republic Bank. And First Republic Bank had a wealth division. There were about 12,000 clients in that. And after the acquisition was completed in May of this year, 2024, then a lot of people started getting sort of this notification or invitation to move over to JP Morgan Private Bank. The bar there is normally $10 million, but it looked like people were being invited with assets lower than that. And then there's also this uh, JP Morgan Private Client that's getting started that has um, even lower requirements, I think 750,000. Uh, but there were people that you know could be grandfathered in from FRB, even if they had uh, lower asset levels. Anyway, so the video got me kind of interested in this topic of sort of premium banking tiers, basically, you know, increased service and other perks that you might get for having, you know, a certain amount of assets um, at a particular institution. So in today's video, I want to look at some of the offerings from some of the, the different um, banks and investment companies out there and take a look at, you know, uh, what are the pros and cons and different perks. So let's start off with Chase. And mind you, I didn't do a super deep dive into all these companies. There might be some nuance and details that um, could be helpful to people, so please do let us know in the comments below if I missed something. Uh, but looking at Chase, it looked like essentially you'd start to get some real benefits at the $15,000 asset level. This is the Premier Plus checking. And you know, once you get to these levels, then of course you, you get basic stuff like waiving the monthly maintenance fees and, and that kind of thing. Um, I'm not going to really talk about that. Um, I just assume like I would never want to pay a maintenance fee to any bank. It's crazy. So that's not even going to be part of the discussion today. Just assume that that's kind of built in. So with this Premier Plus, uh, the other benefit that you get is you get uh, four times a month an ATM fee rebate. So that could be useful. But if you step up to the next level, which is Sapphire Banking uh, with assets of $75,000, then you get full ATM fee reimbursements and you also get wire fee waivers. So that's a nice perk, you know, if you're um, kind of more international or need to wire money on a frequent basis. This is just the, um, the Chase wire fee that gets Wave, though. Then if we double the assets to 150,000, we've got Chase Private Client. With this, you get access to the Private Client Banker. And then there's some lifestyle benefits now, like access to lounges, um, you know, early tickets to particular sports or entertainment events, and, um, you know, maybe some special seating. So um, all of this at first sounds pretty good, uh, but the real big problem, I think, with Chase for me, and one reason that I wouldn't go for it, is at least the way I'm reading it, um, most of the accounts that I would want to use with Chase uh, to meet this requirement are ineligible. So eligible accounts are checking and savings accounts, which is fine for uh, maybe 15, um, I don't know, about 75,000 in, in um, you know, liquid cash. That's kind of a lot of cash to be holding on to, so eh. And then when we look at the investment accounts, which is the way I'd want to you know, qualify for it, it says they have to be non-retirement JP Morgan wealth management accounts that are serviced by JP Morgan private client advisor. So what that says to me is there's going to be AUM fees, right? They're going to charge fees for you know, having the assets managed and having this advisor and all that stuff. And that gets really, really expensive. So there's a good tool that that I'll link to in the description below um, that can give you an idea of what the impact of fees can be on your portfolio over time, and it is drastic. So um, that makes Chase absolutely not an option for me, at least the way I read it. If you know of a way to qualify for these using self-directed assets and not paying any fees, you know, let us know. But the way it looks to me, um, it's absolutely a no-go in my book. Next, looking at JP Morgan, this is of course still in the Chase family. But here we've got those higher tiers that I talked about a moment ago. So there's JP Morgan private client, once you've got 750,000 or more, unless you're kind of grandfathered in from First Republic. And here you essentially get all of the, um, the benefits of Chase private client, uh, but then also, you know, 
their 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 branches are separate and uh, the, the level of service is probably higher as well and then if you move up to 10 million uh, then you're in the jp morgan private banking and wealth management uh, and here you would have access to a pretty rare credit card uh, which is the jp morgan credit card which um, is essentially a chase sapphire reserve card uh, with a slightly higher annual fee um, but i hear incredible concierge service so that's really the big perk of it also exclusivity and the card looks pretty cool as well but again here the big key is whether or not you have to pay um if you have to pay you know gross fees for having your assets managed by jp morgan and it looks like that to me and so that's not something that i would be interested in at all next though we've got a bank that you know for a time there was i think one of the biggest banks in the world uh, which is Citibank. And they've got kind of um, these different relationship tiers that span from, you know, kind of near that Premier Plus checking, well, double that, uh, $30,000, uh, going up to levels like the JP Morgan, where we've got a um, million dollars to be in the private client. So looking at City Priority with the $30,000 asset requirement, you do get the wire fee waiver. You also get a financial checkup, which is kind of their sort of unique part. That's kind of interesting. And then also no foreign exchange fees using the debit card. Moving up to City gold with $200,000 in assets. I think your assets can dip down to like 180k in this instance and the other ones as well, but this is kind of the, the base threshold. Here you now also get ATM fee reimbursement, which is great. You also get lounge access, concierge services, a membership to city bike, which could be good if you're in one of those kind of bikeable cities that have those lying around. And especially good if you're in New York is you get the culture pass. So this would provide free entry to the uh, Museum of Modern Art, to the Guggenheim, to the Botanical Garden, Museum of the City of New York. So that's pretty cool, actually. If you're in New York, um, this, this looks like a pretty good option. And then the other kind of interesting perk that you get at this level is a $200 rebate for things like Hulu, TSA PreCheck and Global Entry, uh, Amazon Prime. This is annual, of course, also Spotify. And then if you move up to the private client level, that's with a million dollars in assets. Then you get all the above, but you also get a $400 annual rebate on those subscriptions. And it also adds the Wall Street Journal as an option uh, for that to receive that rebate on. But the big one for me here is that eligible deposit investment accounts uh, look to include self-directed investment accounts, also retirement accounts where you can be self-directed. And so this makes it a heck of a lot more attractive than the Chase option for me, especially if I'm someone that lives in New York and can take advantage of all those um, perks that are really set up for that locale. Next, we'll look at Bank of America Merrill Lynch. And specifically, I'm looking at their preferred rewards program. So Bank of America does have Bank of America private client, uh, but that's more if you're doing trusts and philanthropy and, you know, all this kind of uh, complex stuff. And here, this, this is kind of a tiered program that provides some rewards. That's a lot like, you know, well, in the vein of this video. So this is a, a pretty powerful thing because you can have self-directed investments at Merrill Lynch that will qualify you for the Bank of America preferred rewards. So the combination here, as I would you know, play it, would be having a Bank of America credit card and then investment assets at Merrill Lynch to help qualify and get all of the perks. The main perk, this is kind of the superpower, is it um, charges up your cash back or your, your points bonus on your credit cards. So with $20,000, you're at the gold level, that's a 20 5% bump. With $50,000, you're at the platinum level. That's a 50% bump. And with platinum honors, that's $100,000. You're already capping out the credit card benefit, uh, which gives you a 75% increase on earnings of the, the points or cash back. On top of that, because Bank of America is a bank, you also get some banking related benefits like increases on the savings rate of 5, 10, and 20%. And then also reductions in the mortgage origination fee if you get a mortgage through them of two, four, and $600 for these three tiers. On top of that, there's some kind of a savings when you do foreign exchange. And beginning with the platinum level, you can get up to uh, basically one a month, 12 a year um, ATM free rebate. So that's nice. At the platinum level, this becomes, you know, all ATM fees are reimbursed. So that's pretty good. It's quite a lot of benefits at just the $100,000 level. I say just, I mean, I know that's a lot of money, but, you know, relative to, you know, the JP Morgan stuff like this, this is pretty cool. If we move up to the diamond level with a million dollars in assets, then instead of getting a mortgage ori origination fee reduction, you actually get a 25 basis point reduction in the mortgage rate. So that's a pretty big deal, potentially. And that will scale, of course, you know, the, the bigger the property or the more expensive the property, um, you know, then the more you're saving there on, you know, 
I guess the bigger the loan, the more you're saving on that. Then on top of that, you get a foreign exchange fee waiver. And there are also some lifestyle benefits that you know you could check out on their website. So as with City, I would say this definitely looks like an attractive option, especially if you're someone that already uses a Bank of America credit card. Next, we'll look at the sort of trinity or the big trio of low cost brokerages. Uh, you've got Vanguard, Fidelity, and Charles Schwab. Looking at Vanguard, it's a little bit different because they do offer check writing features on their brokerage accounts, but they don't really have like a cash management account or really like a, a checking account type of account. But they do kind of have tiers. Um, if you've got $50,000 with them, then you're, you're classed as like a Voyager account. And so you're able to get access to um, basically people on the phone that can answer more complicated questions about investing. When you hit 500,000, then you're in the Voyager Select tier. And now you have access to a certified financial planner, but it's fee-based. And so, you know, then there's another level at a million that's the flagship. So basically as you go along, uh, you find lower hold times on the phone you get directed to more experienced and more knowledgeable people or a, a wider team. And then they have the option of fee-based advice as well. Um, but I'm not really interested in any of all that. So eh, Vanguard, not all that interesting to me. And it really doesn't provide any of the cool perks that we're seeing with the other programs. Moving over to Fidelity, this one at first also looked really interesting to me. They have what's called their Rewards Plus program with a quarter million dollars in assets. Uh, you're kind of at their gold tier. And here, kind of like Bank of America, Fidelity offers a credit card where you get cash back and it goes into your account. Anyway, so here with their Rewards Plus program, of course, this is gonna be adding a bump on those cash back rewards. In this case, 0.25%. Uh, uh, then moving up to the Platinum level, that's with a million dollars, you get 0.5% increase. So, and then with Platinum Plus at $2 million, then this would increase the cash back by a full percentage point. And then there's a couple of kind of unique um, you know, perks as well here. One of those is that uh, the, uh, the transactions costs on options get waived by a certain amount, uh, increasing as you move up the tiers. And then also you get increasing levels of identity theft insurance, starting at 2 million, then going up to 3, and then up to 5 million. I didn't see anything about ATM fee waivers or um, wire fee waivers or anything like that, but it's still, this looked like a pretty good program at first glance until I looked at the fine print. So unfortunately, um, the assets that are needed to qualify for this have to be managed by Fidelity as a wealth management client. So we're looking at fees of anywhere between 0.5 to 1.5%, and the fees are higher at the lower asset levels, I imagine. That's for wealth management. And then as your assets increase, then there's private wealth management, where the fees do go down more uh, to between 0.2 to 1.04%, but still 1.04% is a tremendous amount. And you would need $2 million in wealth services or a strategic discipline account, and $10 million uh, or more in total investable assets. So. Yeah. Anyway, so it looked like a really cool program, but unfortunately, again, because of the mentioned fees, um, I'm out on that one. Then lastly, we've got Charles Schwab. Here, the tiers are pretty high. Um, you need a million dollars to uh, be, you know, in the sort of client, uh, private client tier. You do get a waiver on domestic wires, which is nice, but it doesn't cover international wires. Those are still $15 done online. But what they do offer is some perks through their partners. So uh, the first is a mortgage rate reduction through Rocket. And then the other is they've partnered up with American Express to offer their credit cards. And so you get a kind of a rebate on the American Express Platinum card, the Charles Schwab version. That annual fee, I think, is like $700. I'll put it up here. So getting $200 off at the private client level is nice, especially if you live in a city or a place where you take advantage of all of the different credits that they offer um, and also um, care about the airline incidental credit. But there are some ways to, to use it for airfare, but it's a little bit complicated and they could close that loophole at any time. But if you move up to private wealth with $10 million in assets, then the um, Amex Platinum beco becomes essentially free because there's a thousand dollar rebate. So um, that's pretty great. And the mortgage rate reduction goes up to 1%. Also, if you've got an investor checking account with Charles Schwab, they do reimburse the ATM fees worldwide anyway. So um, you don't have to be part of the tiers in order to get that. But you know, at least that part is included, um, just like with some of the other good options that we were looking at. And of course, for me, the key here is that you can qualify for these benefits uh, using self-directed accounts. You don't need to have them managed by Schwab. So some kind of closing thoughts on all of this. There's a lot of information and a lot of options. Um, I've put a kind of a, a sorting of all this by um, asset level required. I don't know if it's helpful, but anyway, here's all the data in the table. But basically my take home is that, um, you know, Chase and Fidelity and JP Morgan, those are all out for me because of requiring to have assets by managed by someone and the, the high fees that are involved in that. Vanguard didn't really provide anything. So I'm really just looking at um, Bank of America Merrill Lynch, the Citigold, 
and then also Charles Schwab is the different options. And I think if I were, um, you know, a big Bank of America card user, and um, then the preferred rewards program could be really valuable. Um, the city path also looks to be pretty good as well. Uh, but for me, I just like Charles Schwab, and so I'm going to continue working with them. And um, you know, if I ever get a rebate on the Amex Platinum, then that'd be great. Um, but you know, I'm really happy with them uh, regardless of all these tiers. So personally, I'm not going to be signing up with any of these at the moment. And and the the big reason, I guess, is because instead of using the Bank of America credit card program, um, I'm really happy using uh, the Capital One Duo. So that's still my preferred credit card strategy. Just having those two cards um, seems to be the best bank for the buck in terms of the benefits and, and all that kind of stuff for me. So how about you? Do you have any experience with any of these? Do any of these sound interesting? Let us know in the comments below. Hope you enjoyed today's video and found it helpful. If you did, please hit the like button and consider subscribing. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.